Hey, welcome to part two of two for the DIY epoxy skateboard build. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend clicking over to watch that first. Uh, if you're one of the people that likes to read the last page of the book first, not a problem. Let's go. I am a really visual person, so I need to be able to see exactly what it's going to look like. You see, I have a perfect MDF template right next to it, but it covers up the design, so I can't actually see. Uh, if you're better at visualizing, you don't need to do this step, but this is what I did to pick the layout that I wanted. After you get your shape marked on there, uh, take it over to the bandsaw and just cut really close to the line, about as close to the line as you feel that you can go without going over. This is a relatively new tool in my shop. It's my saw stop, router lift, and router wing. And when you pair it with a quality router bit like that, it makes jobs like this infinitely easier. Setting the height is pretty self-explanatory. And once you get it where you want it, just lock it down. And uh, hold my template on there. I'm using double-sided tape. This is just regular 3M double-sided tape from Staples. Uh, it'll keep the template right exactly in place during the routing so it doesn't wiggle or wobble on you at all. Again, this is a white side spiral template bit. You can see just how clean it cuts. Uh, one of my favorite new bits. I want to mention I had a friend uh, named Matt over at Wood and Other Things that made this template. And I'll include a link below of where you can buy a template from him if you want to do the same thing. He also had a really clever idea because on one of the skateboards I wanted this little fish tail and instead of printing or CNCing an entire another template, he just made this little fish tail that I could add on there. As far as the bevel, I wanted it to be a little asymmetrical. So I did a three quarter inch round over on the bottom and a three eighths inch round over on the top and pretty much accomplished the exact look I was going for. I think it would have looked a little too much like furniture if I would have done the same round over on top and on bottom. So here's the bevel and was relatively happy with how it turned out. I wanted to get it sanded relatively fine when I add the die back into it so you don't see a lot of little scratches and planar nicks. So I took it back up to 320 grit. So for the second round of die, it's pretty much the same as the first, only it goes on a lot smoother and more even since it's uh, sanded nicely to a 320. You will see that it does stain the epoxy a little bit, and I'll show you how to get that off here in just a second. Since the epoxy isn't nearly as porous as the wood, this non-woven pad, just a Scotch-Brite pad, nice and even pressure, uh, took it off pretty easily. I had a pretty specific look I was going for with these skateboards, which was a really high gloss. And so I went with an epoxy top coat. This is West 207 as a special clear hardener. It was a lot of work. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend this unless you have to have this really thick coat. Uh, I could have also taken it to my regular finishing guy um, but I wanted to do a finish that I could show in the shop here. I get a lot of questions when I say that Eco Epoxy has bubbles that don't need popping. Uh, most people don't realize that a epoxy like this West Epoxy gets a ton of bubbles, and that's what I'm doing with that blowtorch video back there is popping all of those little bubbles. Eco Epoxy gets virtually zero bubbles, um, none that need to be popped with a torch like that, but for a fast-drying epoxy like this, you will need to pop them with a torch or a heat gun. Also, I should know I'm using a West System foam roller to apply this. It wasn't my favorite way to apply epoxy. I was just trying a, a new method. And here's a little uh, coffin I made for uh, the skateboard so I could keep all the dust off them while I was letting them cure. And after the first coat has dried, you can see just how rough it looks. This is not at all what it's going to look like when it's finished, but um, the first coat soaks in very unevenly. So don't be discouraged if it looks like this. So for the second coat, I'm doing the same epoxy, 
only did a real light sanding with 400 to take off the little bit of dust nibs and bubbles that were left in there. And now I'm gonna pour it on quite a bit thicker. And this time to spread it out, I'm gonna use something a little bit different. I'm gonna use one of these notch trowels. I like the square ones a little bit better than the pointed one I'm using here. But if you can get your item nice and level, this uh, tends to level up pretty well. You'll see here, um, I got some drips on the sides, which didn't look great, but I'll show you how to fix all that in the end. So now it's starting to look a little better. It's not a great finish, but uh, the whole thing is uniformly glossy anyway. So we're getting there. In the middle of this build, I got probably the coolest new tool I've gotten in two or three years. It's this Festool vacuum clamping system, and the timing couldn't have been better. I wouldn't have got it if I didn't think I'd like it, but I had no idea how much I would love it, especially when working with this epoxy that's only cured for a day that you really don't want to put a clamp into. Um, couldn't imagine doing this project without this now, actually. Highly recommend. And all I'm doing here is sanding it nice and even to 400 to get one last really thick, really smooth coat on this skateboard. I'm going to do the same old trowel I did before, and I'm going to pour it on pretty thick here, as you can see. I may have went a little overboard when it comes to the footage of this, but it's just so cool looking watching this uh, fresh epoxy flow on. So I got a few more clips of this. Enjoy that for a couple more seconds. After you get it all on pretty even with the trowel, go over it a few times with the torch like this, uh, obviously not trying to get it too hot, and this little uh, glue brush I used to clean up the drips on the sides. Since most of you won't be doing the same epoxy top coat, I'm gonna spare you having to watch that whole process. If you do wanna see it, feel free to click the link here though. It was quite a process getting these polished up this shiny, but I'm very pleased with the results. Again, you can check out that link if you want to see the process. Uh, if not, let's finish these skateboards. When I was making this, I talked to Matt over at Wood and other things, and he has already included uh, the hole pattern on these templates, so you won't have to make the same hole pattern if you decide to do this. But here's how I had to do it, because I wasn't smart enough to ask him for that uh, to start with. After I got the holes drilled, I obviously wanted to test fit it before I go drilling holes into my finished skateboards. And luckily it seemed to go on just about right. I'm gonna be putting the MDF right up against the skateboard. And since MDF is a little bit of a rough finish, I covered the whole thing in painter's tape to protect the finish. And I also put a little painter's tape on the MDF to make this glue come off easier. And all I'm doing with the glue is just gonna hold it in place because when uh, drill these holes, you didn't want to budge even, you know, a millimeter or two could throw the whole thing off. Oh, and painter's tape over your holes will really give you a much cleaner hole than not having any on there. This is a super cool little cobalt countersink that I have. I really rarely get to use it. It works great on metal and all other uh, materials. Gave a very, very clean hole on the, the epoxy too. Even though the screws are gonna cover up this for the most part, I figured it's best just to put a little bit more dye back in these holes to make it look just perfect. And instead of having raw wood there, I put just a little dab of shellac on there just in case a little bit of water does seep down. I want to have some protection. Now it's just a matter of bolting everything together. I should mention these are Christmas presents for my nephews, but as I'm recording it, it's the middle of January, so they're either going to be really late or really early, depending on how you look at it. And my sister gave me the colors they would want, purple and pink and black and pink. 
I think they look awesome. Uh, love to hear below in the comments what you guys think of the colors we decided to go with. It's probably also worth noting that I have never stood on a skateboard longer than maybe a second and a half, however long it takes me to fall. So skateboard guys can probably give you some better tips on putting the wheels on and tightening the trucks and all that. But I can make a pretty cool looking skateboard and here's how they turned out. Had some regular photos on the street. I think they looked pretty cool. I also did a few of the light painting photos, which I went over in one of my other videos. I would love to hear your thoughts on which photos you prefer. I think the light painting looks really cool, but it looks so cool it almost looks fake. And the ones on the street aren't quite as impactful, but look a little more realistic. So please let me know in the comments which photos you think better represent these skateboards. All right, that's the whole video. Uh, if I left anything out, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to answer any questions you have. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more just like it. Oh, and here's a video of my dog chasing a skateboard.